Hi, I'm Dr. Alek Verma. Welcome to another PathLogos tutorials on YouTube. This is the final part of tutorial on multiple myeloma. Um, sorry, I was a bit occupied and therefore there is a gap of two weeks between the previous video and this one. Previously, I discussed pathogenesis and clinical features of multiple myeloma. If you're here for the first time, I recommend you to please go watch the previous parts A and B for two reasons. One is you'll have a complete knowledge of the topic and the terminologies that I use here. And you will find this more interesting and easy to understand the concept behind the diagnosis. For those who have already watched and are familiar, let's learn how are we going to make a diagnosis of multiple myeloma. Hope you like the video. The diagnosis of multiple myeloma requires a combination of clinical features, radiology and pathological investigations. The pathological investigations include blood and bone marrow examination, serum and urine electrophoresis for M protein and urine for Benz Jones proteins, cytogenetics commonly involving the IGH locus on chromosome 14 and other parameters like serum albumin, beta 2 microglobin levels and interleukin 6 for prognostic evaluation. As discussed previously, due to interleukin 6 mediated activation of rank and rankle interactions that is increased osteoclastic activity which makes the bones weaker and causes punched out lesions and the patients present with bone pain and pathological fractures commonly of the axial skeleton along with features of hypercalcemia. The kidneys are affected by the light chains being smaller in size, they cross the glomeruli and are toxic to the renal tubular epithelial cells. And these light chains, when they occlude the renal tubules, lead to cast nephropathy. Due to the secretion of the A light chains by the malignant plasma cells, they cause renal amyloidosis and commonly present as chronic kidney disease. Since the kidneys are affected, there is lack of production of erythropoietin and also the malignant plasma cells replace the bone marrow erythroid cells causing anemia. Due to abnormal activity of the immunoglobins that is infections, binding of the light chains or immunoglobins to platelet and clotting factors lead to platelet and clotting abnormalities as well. And the most common cause of death in a patient of multiple myeloma is infections followed by renal failure. Thus, the symptoms of multiple myeloma are remembered by the mnemonic CRAMP, where C stands for hypercalcemia, R for renal failure, A for anemia, and B for bone lytic lesions. The other test we'll do is radiology. For evaluation of the bone lesions, we can do a X-ray, CT scan, MRI, or a PET scan, where you'll see punched out osteolytic lesions. Studies have also shown that for evaluation of response to treatment, we should rely only on MRI, which is being, being the most sensitive. When evaluating a peripheral blood smear of a case of multiple myeloma, the first thing you look is for Roulet formation. The Roulet formation is when the RBCs stick to one another as stack of coins as shown in the image. The Roulet formation occurs as the RBC loses the zeta potential which is due to negative charge on the RBC. And as we know from physics that the two similar charges repel each other, whenever there is an increase in proteins such as globulins or fibrinogen which contain positive charge, the RBCs then come close to one another and stack as coins. It is important to note that the Roulet formation not only occurs in multiple myeloma but also in infections due to increase in fibrinogen. The difference is that in multiple myeloma, the Roulet formation is due to increase in the protein globulin due to secretions of immunoglobulin by plasma cells, while in infections, the increase in fibrinogen is responsible for Roulet formation. Those who know me on Instagram, I've always told students not to go for macroscopic examination of slides like um, this. But here, I just wanted to bring to a notice that because of the increase in globulins, the slide of multiple myeloma or macroglobulinemia looks kind of darker as compared to anemia, even though the patient of multiple myeloma also presents with anemia. 
This darker stain is due to increase in the gamma globulins that evidently bind to the stain. You might get a spotter or even an MCQ where on the basis of macroscopic examination of the slide, you will have to spot which could possibly be the slide of multiple myeloma. And in this case, the image is, the image is on the right, labeled as gammopathy. In a normal peripheral blood smear, you don't see any plasma cells. Also in the bone marrow, the count is less than 3%. Now how do the plasma cells look? The plasma cells have an eccentric nucleus having a coarse cartwheel chromatin and an amphophilic cytoplasm along with a perinuclear half, which is the lighter area around the nucleus rich in Golgi zone. When the percentage of plasma cells is more than 20% in the peripheral blood, then you label it as plasma cell leukemia. This is how plasma cells appear in the bone marrow biopsy in a patient of multiple myeloma where you can see plasma cells in diffuse pattern having an eccentric nucleus and a coarse chromatin along with a perinuclear half. Now Grief classified plasma cells on the basis of morphology into four types. One is the mature type which I just described. Then there is immature type, intermediate type and plasmablastic type. Plasmablastic cells are one which are large cells having a central nuclei and high NC ratio. They have a fine chromatin rather than a coarse chromatin and they also have a prominent nuclei. Also, the perinuclear half is absent from the plasma blast. So you may have difficulty in recognizing these cells and therefore you would want to do or use an immunohistochemistry marker. One thing important is also that the presence of plasma blast confers a very bad prognosis. The immunohistochemistry markers that you use and are positive in a case of multiple myeloma are CD38, CD138, CD56 and cyclin D1. CD19 as we all know is a B cell markers and plasma cell originate from the B cells but the CD19 is only positive in a normal benign plasma cells. In a case of multiple myeloma or malignant plasma cells, the CD19 marker is negative. You would also want to test for monoclonality, whether these plasma cells are monoclonal or polyclonal. The monoclonal cells, which are malignant cells, would be positive for either kappa or lambda, since they are monoclonal. The plasma cells would only secrete either one of them. But if they are positive for both kappa and lambda, means they are polyclonal. Now, let's focus on other microscopic features that you can come across in a slide rich in plasma cells. First is Russell bodies, which are eosinophilic large homogeneous immunoglobulin containing inclusions usually found in a plasma cell undergoing excessive synthesis of immunoglobulin. The Russell bodies is characteristic of the distended endoplasmic reticulum. The excess immunoglobulin builds up and form intracytoplasmic globules, which is thought to be a result of insufficient protein transport within the cell. Now, when you see the similar inclusion over the nucleus, that is intranuclear inclusions, you call them as Dutcher bodies. The Dutcher bodies have been long thought that they originate from the nucleus, but recent studies have shown that they are in fact intracytoplasmic inclusions that imaginate into or overlie the nucleus. Moth cells are plasma cells containing immunoglobulin inclusions, or you can say that numerous Russell bodies in a plasma cell is called a moth cell. I'll also like to mention that all these three inclusions, the moth cells, Russell, Russell bodies and Dutcher bodies are not specifically seen in multiple myelomas. They can be seen in any condition which has increased plasma cells like infections in filaria or autoimmune disease or connective tissue disorders. Thus, seeing this inclusion doesn't necessarily mean that you are seeing a case of myeloma. But this cell called as flame cells are thought to be characteristically seen in a case of multiple myeloma and that too in immunoglobin A myelomas or IgA myelomas. Flame cells are plasma cells with a distinctive reddish hue which accumulates around the peripheral areas of the cell commonly seen in IgA myeloma as a result of precipitated carbohydrate rich immunoglobin A in the endoplasmic reticulum. 
I could not get an image of a flame cell with no copyright restrictions on public domain, so I had to modify it a normal plasma cell on Pixar to look like a flame cell. Blood electrophoresis due to increase in gamma globulins would show an M band and forms an imaginary M, hence called as M spike. Now these immunoglobulins are seen in blood. Since they are larger in size, they do not cross the kidneys, hence cannot be seen in a urine electrophoresis until unless there is damage to the kidney later in the disease and now you can see the M spike even in urine electrophoresis. The other test performed on urine is to detect Benz Jones proteins, which are immunoglobulin light chains different from albumin. The special features of Benz Jones protein are that on he heating the urine to 40, between 40 to 60 degrees Celsius, the precipitation uh, occurs of the protein. And uh, had it been albumin, the urine precipitate would have formed on temperatures more than 60 degrees Celsius. On further heating the urine, uh, till uh, 100 degrees Celsius, the precipitation dissolves and when cooled again below 60 degrees Celsius, the precipitation again reappears. And this proves that the patient has been shown proteinuria. The cytogenetics involve translocation 414, 614, 1114 and translocation 1416. The 14 obviously involves the IGH locus on chromosome 14. The other parameters that we should uh, measure is serum albumin and serum beta 2 microglobulin. Serum albumin less than 3.5% indicates the damage to the kidneys and albumin is thus excreting out of the body and therefore it is reduced in concentration. Serum beta 2 microglobulins means that the light chains are producing too much beta 2 microglobulin as their components and thus increased concentration means there is the more in concentration and the light chains are also more in concentration. The other parameters to check for renal failure is serum creatinine and uric acid. Uh, the bad prognostic factors that you should know and can be easily asked in exams is increased beta 2 microglobin, increased serum creatinine, plasma blastic morphology and diffuse involvement of bone marrow, deletion of chromosome 13, 17, hyperdiploidy and increase in serum interleukin 6. Before I end, I wanted to grab your attention to the International Myeloma Working Group classification for multiple myeloma given in 2014 where they made few changes from the last IMWG classification in 2003. I from the very beginning have been telling you that to make a diagnosis of multiple myeloma and to differentiate from the precursors such as monoclonal gammopathy of unknown significance or smoldering myeloma you need CRAB which is Features of hypercalcemia, renal failure, anemia, and bone lytic lesions. International Myeloma Working Group in 2014 recommended that even in the absence of CRAB, you can still diagnose multiple myeloma by using SLIM. Now, what are the new diagnostic biomarkers which are included? S stands for 60% clonal bone marrow plasma cells. LI is the serum light chain ratio of involved or uninvolved is more than 100 if the involved serum free light chain is more than 10 mg per deciliter. And M stands for more than one focal lesions of more than 5 mm detected by MRI. The presence of any one of these diagnostic markers with clonal bone marrow plasma cells more than 10% or biopsy proven bony or extra plasma cytoma even in the absence of CRAB features is now considered sufficient to diagnose multiple myeloma. If you want to know more about the IMWG 2014 recommendations, I'll drop the link below. That's it for now. Thanks a lot. Do subscribe, leave a comment or suggestion, give a thumbs up and if possible, please share this video with your friends. Have a good day and see you soon.